Your Globe Hall LT has arrived and we are here to help you assemble your awesome new e-bike. Before you get started, make sure the box has arrived in good condition. As you proceed through the build, inspect the bike and parts for any potential shipping damage. If anything about the box, bike, or parts appears to be damaged, contact Specialized Rider Care for support. Assembly requires basic mechanical skills and quality tools. It is critical that you use a high quality torque wrench to make sure bolts are tightened to spec. Bolts that are either too loose or too tight may compromise the safety of the assembly. Inside the box you will find the assembly guide, user manual, and the owner's manual. You will find these tools included in the box. Multi-head 15 and 17 millimeter wrench, large and small torque wrenches, seven different torque wrench bits, a bicycle floor pump with a pressure gauge, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a set of scissors or side cutters. If you have never used a torque wrench before, please read the detailed instructions in the assembly guide. Keep the box upright and pull it into an open space. Rotate the plastic locks counterclockwise to open. There are three on the bottom of each side. Use the side handles to lift the outer box up and off the inner packaging. Your bike is packaged in its own work stand. This base is your work stand for the rest of the assembly. Be sure to keep all the packaging materials. You will need to use them to rebox the bike if it needs to be returned for any reason. The small parts box is marked number one and labeled start here. It is located on top of the rear tower along with the globe wrench and the stem for the handlebar. Remove the small parts box. Open it to find all the stuff you need. Follow along with the assembly guide and completely read the owner's manual, which has important safety information that should be reviewed carefully and entirely before the first ride. This video is a visual guide to supplement those documents. Remove the stem and the globe wrench and set them aside. Open the two tabs holding the two boxes together labeled two and three. Remove the center brace labeled three. Keep it close. It's a convenient box to hold on to small parts throughout the build. The kickstand is labeled four and is zip tied to the bike frame. Using scissors or side cutters, cut the four cable ties. Remove the kickstand and cardboard. Set it aside for later. Move to the front of the bike. At the top of the cardboard support tower labeled five, open the tabs to remove the top box. Save the top box to use as support later. Remove the front wheel with the fender and set it aside. Best not to lay it down on the disc brake rotor. Keep it propped up. Release the tab on the front tower down here at the bottom. Slide the tower out. Now that we have some of the packaging out of the way, let's start putting this bike together. You'll need the large torque wrench with the six millimeter bit. Grab the handlebar stem and remove the plastic cap on top of the bolt. Use the wrench to loosen the bolt, turning counterclockwise a few times. Slide the stem into the head tube at the front of your bike. For now, insert the stem halfway with the face plate facing forwards. Use the large torque wrench with the six millimeter hex to tighten the stem enough to hold it in place. We will return to this part later to set your desired handlebar height and properly torque the bolt. Using the same wrench and hex, loosen the faceplate bolts, turning counterclockwise, and remove the bolts, washers, and the faceplate from the stem. Pick up the handlebar and place it in the stem. Properly position the handlebar with the HMI display on the left and the shifter on the right. Brake levers towards the front. Then place the faceplate over the handlebar and align the bolt holes. Get each bolt with a washer started by threading each one into place by hand. Using the large torque wrench and the 6mm hex, tighten the top and bottom bolts so the gap in the faceplate is even, leaving it just loose enough to still move the handlebar. Use the hash marks to center the handlebar. 
Once in position, start tightening the bolts using the torque wrench in a cross pattern, one half turn for each in order until it starts to feel snug and holds the handlebar in place. Now pay close attention to the torque value as you continue to tighten each bolt in the cross pattern, securing each one to 10 Newton meters. You'll now loosen the fork brace. Pick up your globe wrench and loosen the bolts on either side of the fork brace and remove them along with the washers and safety washers. Set them aside. You will use those bolts and safety washers to secure the front wheel. To make assembly easier, you can use the front tower insert to lift the bicycle off the base. Open tabs on both sides of the center section on the rear tower. Lift the front of the bicycle upwards, then slide the front tower cap under the controller. Ensure the bike is stable before moving on to the next step. Grab your large torque wrench and the 8mm hex bit. Position the kickstand under the chainstay mounting plate. Align the holes with the mounting plate holes. Insert the two mounting bolts with washers from the top of the mounting plate into the kickstand. Use your large torque wrench with the 8mm hex bit to tighten the bolts to 20 newton meters. Lower the kickstand to support the bike and remove the tower cap from under the controller. Remove the front fork support. Slide the fender between the fork legs with the light facing forward. Align the top fender bracket with the mounting point on the rear of the fork crown. Insert a 12 mm bolt and use the small torque wrench and a 5 mm hex to tighten to 8 newton meters. Align the holes of the fender struts with the two mounting points at the bottom of the fork. Insert a 12 mm bolt with a washer at each mounting point and loosely thread each one in by hand. Use the small torque wrench with the 4 mm hex to tighten both bolts to 6 newton meters. Repeat on the other side. Connect the cable to the front light. Before installing the front wheel, remove the spacer from the front brake caliper. Once this is removed, do not pull the front brake lever. Align the front wheel between the fork legs, aiming the brake rotor into the caliper. Collect the nuts and safety washers you removed earlier. First place the safety washers on the axle, with the tabs in the holes on the dropout, followed by the serrated washers, then thread the nuts onto the axle by hand. Using the 15 mm socket on the globe wrench, tighten the nuts by alternating left and right until they are tight. You should feel some resistance once fully tightened and the wrench may leave an imprint on your palm. 35 Newton meters to be exact. In order to align the handlebar, the stem bolt must be sufficiently loose. Using the large torque wrench and the 6 mm hex bit, turn the stem bolt counterclockwise to loosen. The quill stem is extra long to accommodate all size riders. You can learn more about height adjustments in the Hall ST First Ride video. Then you can turn the handlebars to align the stem with the front wheel and frame. Tighten the stem bolt to 20 newton meters. Open the corner locking tabs on the rear tower. Remove the tower cap. Hold the handlebars with a foot on the kickstand and roll the bike forward. With the bike out of the box, you'll need to keep it up on the kickstand. Use your foot to lower the kickstand to the ground. Then roll the bike backward with your foot on the kickstand holding it in place. The kickstand is wide and strong enough to keep the bike up while loading. It is not intended to support you on the bike. Pedals are left and right specific. Each is noted with L and R stickers and is stamped into the pedal axle. The right pedal is threaded normally. Turn it clockwise into the right crank arm. Use the 15 mm flat globe wrench to fully tighten the pedal. There will be some resistance and may leave a noticeable imprint on your hand. The left pedal is reverse threaded, meaning you'll turn it counterclockwise to tighten. The bell attaches to the handlebar and you'll use the torque wrench with the 2.5 mm hex to tighten it in place. Using a floor pump with a gauge, inflate the tires to your desired pressure. There is a tire pressure guide in the manual. 
20 PSI is a good starting point. Note the max pressure on the tire sidewall. Do not exceed that limit. There is an extra support included with your bike, the rear accessory support. It is used with the running boards and cargo rail accessories. Follow the installation instructions in your assembly guide when you decide to install this additional piece. The Hall LT has an extra long double clamp telescoping seat post. Begin by adjusting the top quick release clamp. If the post does not slide up, the lower hex clamp also needs to be loosened. Check out saddle height adjustments in the Hall ST first ride video. Your Globe Bikes battery is only partially charged and is in sleep mode. It must be powered up with the charger connected in order to activate. Plug the charger directly into an outlet. Do not use an extension cord. Open the charge port cover and insert the plug into the socket aligning the white dot with the arrow. Power on the bike at the HMI display. You only need to do this once. In the future when you charge, you do not turn the bike on when plugged in. Your Hall LT is ready for you to get more into it.